So, hi everyone, I'm Thomas, I'm from Italy, as you can hear from my accent. And this is my GitHub account. I do the, a bunch of open source. You can find me at, at Delvedor. I work for a company called Elastic. You may know us for the Elasticsearch database. I maintain the Elasticsearch JS client, so if you have some problem with it, please come to me. And uh, so, hey, we've built a new framework. Inside, we are using Express. No, I'm sorry. You have not built a new framework. We have not built a new framework with Express inside. No. So, let me start the talk with an, an a hot take. Or you die as an innovator, or you live long enough to become the technical dev. Can we avoid that? Well, uh, this story starts two years ago. It was the summer of uh, 2016. And uh, there was a lot of uh, very nice framework at the time for Node.js Express that I guess everybody knows what is Express, and Happy, Restify, Koa, and so on and so forth. So, me and a friend of mine, Matteo, we are very addicted about performance. We started digging inside the code of Express, trying to figure out if we could improve the performance of the framework. Well, we couldn't, because uh, Express has something like 20 million downloads every month, and uh, our changes will lead to like huge breaking changes for the community. And when you have that kind of downloads, you definitely cannot afford a breaking change. So it was the same basically for Happy or Restify. Then uh, we started working on a smaller scale, on a small library, trying to improve the performance of small pieces of your code. So we started with uh, this library, FastJSON Stringify. Sorry about the name. You know, we are programmers. Naming things is not our thing. And uh, what is it? Basically, I don't know if you know this, uh, we spend a lot of time serializing JSON. It's a very expensive operation. So we come up with uh, this solution. You just require the library. You pass a JSON schema to it. How many of you know what is a JSON schema? Oh, very good, perfect. So we declare the shape, basically, of the object that we will serialize. In this case, we have three properties, first name, last name, age. The first two are strings, and the third one's in integer. Then we serialize it. And with this technique, we, we are able to uh, be two, three times faster than the basic JSON serializer, in sometimes even five times faster. And this is thanks to some black magic inside the code generation, but don't worry, it's perfectly safe, in theory. And um, so we, we, we thought uh, this thing. Well, fast JSON Stringify is working very, very well. Why not build an entire framework over this idea? Come on, let's do it. So that's why how Fastify was born. It was uh, summer, sorry, September of uh, two, 2016. And at the time, we were really fast. And by fast, I mean we were even faster than Node Core HTTP server, that is a nice result, but uh, after the first week of uh, very active development, we thought, yeah, performance is a nice thing. You may want to have it in your application, but it's definitely not the best selling point, even if, especially if it's uh, the only selling point of a framework. So we started uh, thinking about the design goals for our project. And uh, as said, the first design goal for us was obviously bid for speed. You know, the, the framework is a fastify, it can be slow, right? So this is a, a very simple benchmark between a node core, fastify, happy, and restify, and express. And basically here we are, for every request, we are creating an object, serializing, sending back to the user. This benchmark has been taken on node 10 on an AWS machine. As you can see, Node Core is uh, serving up to 43,000 requests per second, Fastify 40,000, Happy 28, Restify 27, and Express 25. So yeah, that's a nice result. But, and, uh, you know, usually uh, when you have something which is really, really fast, you are probably sacrificing some features. And this is because for every feature that you add in, uh, in your code, you will uh, adding more and more overhead to your code base. So the next design goal for us was almost zero overhead for our framework. So what is the overhead? Let's say the overhead is the price that you are paying for a set of features. 
And uh, so in theory, the, uh, if you have a lot of features, you have a, a very high overhead. And uh, we, we did not agree with that, or at least we tried to not agree with that. So um, we started working a lot on optimizing our application. And one of the tools that we use a lot is Zero X. Basically, is a uh, frame graph generator. How many of you know it is a frame graph? Okay. Basically, a frame graph is a, a graph, obviously, as you can see, that samples your application during time and shows you which uh, function has been called, when, which function has called another one, if uh, they are optimized or not, and so on. So this is uh, the node core server that uh, we, we saw before the benchmark. All this tower on the left is just node core stuff, so reading from the socket, parsing the HTTP headers, and so on, while this very small tower is the our handler. So in that very small tower, we are creating objects, serializing, sending back to the user. And this is the frame graph of Fastify. On the left, same part as before, and this is the entire Fastify web framework, which is a little bit higher, as you can see, but this is Express. As you can see, there are quite a lot of functions that are working. So that was one of the main reasons because we, uh, we couldn't uh, start working directly on Express because, come on. So um, how can we lower the, the, over, the overhead of your application? Well, for us, and, and the Dex design goal was the API should be as light as possible because for every feature that we implement in core, is something that we must maintain. And this means that changing it in the future could lead to massive breaking changes for the community, and we don't want that. So how can we fix this? Our solution was uh, the, this one. The uh, framework should be extensible via plugins. We took a lot of uh, inspiration from Happy about this. Happy has an amazing plugins ecosystem. So uh, we like copied the idea, and then I started adding uh, some features that uh, we cared a lot about that we'll explain you in a moment. And in our opinion, the, how works the plugin system of Fastify is like the, probably the major selling point, and, and now I'll try to explain you why. So how you register a plugin? You just call fastify.register, and the first parameter is your plugin code, the second is an, an option object, easily. And what is a plugin? A plugin is just a function that takes uh, three parameters, the Fastify instance, option, and next. Uh, what you can do inside a plugin? Well, you can obviously register other plugins. You can add in new hooks to interact with the request response lifecycle of every request. You can add a decorator, uh, which is basically you are enhancing the Fastify API with your utilities. And obviously, you can add routes. Come on, it's a framework. And finally, you have to call next. Why you have the call next? Well, Fastify tries to help you in uh, structure your application in a way that every process that is asynchronous will be handled by us. So uh, your application will not start listening for new requests until every plugin has finished its loading. And we also guarantee the order of the plugin or loading. As, as, as uh, written here, um, async await is supported as well, so here you can easily declare the function as async and remove the next part. We will handle it for you. But uh, let's see a little bit uh, how works the architecture of Fastify. Basically, uh, you have your entry point, and the entry point is uh, registering two plugins, one and two, and plugin two is also registering plugin three. Now, um, we work a lot on uh, building an encapsulation system for our plugins. What does this mean? This means that what you're seeing is a direct acyclic graph. So you cannot go uh, for, uh, behind once you are entered inside a plugin. So for example, if you are uh, decorate uh, our Fastify instance inside the plugin two, we will able to access that new API all inside the plugin two and all its children, but not inside the parent or the siblings. Uh, why this is very cool? Well, uh, let's say that we enforce the users to avoid creating uh, cross dependencies between plugins, mixed logic, and this is very useful in case you, are, um, you want to migrate in the future from a monolith to microservices. Let's say you have just built your new amazing startup, and uh, in the first period you are just coding 
like uh, a god. And uh, yeah, two years after, your, uh, your startup is super successful, and you need to scale your application and migrate to a, a microservice architecture. If you are using other frameworks, such as Express or Happy, that will be difficult if you, are not, if you have not very hard code uh, convention. While Fastify will be very easy. You have just to duplicate the entry point, so separate the application, remove in the first one the plugin two, the other one the plugin one, done. You have, now you have an amazing microservices system. So uh, what about if you want to maybe expose a functionality from a plugin to a, to a parent? That was actually a problem. You know, we want to share plugins with our community, but if you can't, if you are registering a plugin that is adding a feature and you cannot use it where you are registering, eh, it's not that useful. So we created this utility, which is Fastify plugin. You will hear the, the plugin word a lot. I'm sorry for that. And as you can see here, we are declaring an async function. We are decorating Fastify instance with and some awesome utility that we really need. Then we ex when we export our code, we will wrap it with Fastify plugin utility. And then all your uh, new function, utilities, and so on and so forth will be available also inside the entry point. So the plugin that is registering your plugin. Um, so how works, how, how, in which case you will do this in the real world? Let's say you are creating a database connector. So you are creating your new plugin, you uh, take your database connector, you connect to the database, you, you take the client, you decorate the Fastify instance with the client, and finally you can call next because uh, you, are, you are sure that your application is ready to start. Well, if the, that app, uh, plugin is not using the Fastify plugin utility, nobody will get, be able to use your database connector. That's a shame. So if you use it, you have just to then uh, register it in your application, and the a new database connector will be available everywhere. Another cool thing that enabled by the encapsulation, in my opinion, is that you can have a custom log level for every plugin. What does this mean? Let's say you have two versions of your API, one and two. The version one is headed. You, basically, you don't have even to develop it anymore. So you set the log level at error, because you just want to know if something goes wrong. Then you have the version two. You are still under heavy development, and you want to know everything about it. So log level debug. As you can see, I'm also adding the prefix option, which basically we prefix every route that are declared inside the plugin and all these children. Useful. You can also uh, add a custom log level even for a single route, and uh, that was the best feature for me because uh, if you, are, you have the status route and there is a load balancer who is talking to that route like every second, all your logs will be just the status route. So you disable it is a nice thing. Uh, so, as in JavaScript, everything is an object. In Fastify, in theory, everything is a plugin. That's the idea. So, now we had a, a very good performance, a nice API, a good way to handle asynchronous bootstrapping. Uh, what's next? Uh, you know, you can have the best framework ever, the best API ever, but if uh, your developer experience is poor, nobody will use your code, even you probably. So, uh, these are uh, our main uh, things that we try to focus during these two years. Build an API that's easy to use and understand is very important. If you have to open the documentation every time, it's not a good API. Extensive equality documentation, obviously, for maybe the first time of the API, and uh, a nice tooling around it. We have built a Fastify CLI tool that helps you a lot and um, bootstrap a new application and handle the entire life cycle of, of uh, your application. It's uh, very opinionated. Basically, it's a container all over our ID ideas of how uh, a Fastify application should work. Then, as I said before, a painless transition from monolith to microservices. That's quite useful. And finally, we try to be as much responsive as possible to issues and questions. That's very hard, but we try to. Then, you know, okay, now we have a good developer experience, we have a performant framework, nice API, but how work the support? Nobody will use your code if your support is like nothing. So we, we worked a lot on a, figure out a way to have a long-term support for, for Fastify, and that's what we came up. A minimum six months of active development from the release date, 
an additional six months on security updates, so this is similar to, to Node. And finally, we are also part of a Node.js canary in the gold mine suite. How many of you knows what is canary in the gold mine? One, okay, perfect, thank you. <laughs> so the canary gold mine is an amazing tool built by a Node core team. Basically, it's a smoke testing suite. So uh, every package that is part of this suite will be, uh, for every new release of Node.js, they will run all the tests of your package before the node, will be the node will be released to the public. So they will be able to catch some weird errors before the public knows about them. It's very cool. So another design goal was the open open source. Uh, Taran talked uh, about this yesterday. This is a, an amazing thing for your project. I highly recommend it if you want to have a lot of people working with you, a lot of ideas in your project. It's very nice. Basically, uh, the definition is, uh, is in these few lines. Individuals making significant and valuable contributions are given the commit access to the project to contribute as they see fit. You can find the entire definition at openopensource.org. It's very long and well-defined, and I highly recommend it if you are trying to improve the, your framework and the help uh, in growing the community. So, uh, two years after. Well, uh, Fastify version two is coming. We are human, so we made errors. And, uh, and version two basically has a lot of bug fixes from the version one that uh, should be a little, little breaking change, I swear, very little one. So if you are using Fastify, if you want to, please do it now so you can uh, tell us what is not working. Uh, we will lend it to the version two. We have not a release date yet, it will be soon, hopefully. Uh, if you want to follow all the work, it uh, is uh, under the Samware measure label on GitHub. So, community impact. Uh, let's, say, let's see how it did work in these two years. We have seen a continuous growth of download during the years. We have crossed the 150,000 mark in, in this summer. That's good. If you search the keyword Fastify on NPM, we'll find at least 155 packages. This was a few days ago. And uh, currently, there are 78 officially recognized plugins by us. What does it mean? If I've just built a very good plugin to connect to something, to a database, to a tool, to a brain connector, I don't know, and, um, and you want to share it with, the, with others, what can you do? Basically, you send it to us, we will help you reviewing the code, help you using in the best way the API, and then we add it to our uh, ecosystem list. And 33 of these uh, plugins are directly maintained by the core team. So you can see there is a nice community impact. And the last year, we saw uh, one plugin every 10 days on average, which, come on, it's a nice result. And a uh, little bit of stats about the project. Yesterday morning, there was like 7,800 stars on, on, uh, on GitHub, so I brought how many stars we had on, the, on my slides. And then Matteo, the other lead maintainer, wrote this tweet. So I had to update my slides. We, tonight, we reached the 8,000 stars. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, we have uh, around 100 unique contributors to the project. We, uh, we have more than 400 forks, more than 90 releases in these two years, more than 1,700 uh, commits. And the core team is composed by, I wrote nine, but it's better to say eight awesome people plus one, which is me. I would love to thank them personally. Uh, Alevo, David is me, Evan, Luciano, James, Matteo, Nathan, Dustin, and Triviker, who just joined the team like three days ago. Welcome. And uh, so, did we make it? Let us know. Thank you. <laughs>